Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Smash a like on the video if you can. Please hit the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber already. Look, Jamie Vardy is running out of time. The fact is, he's pushing towards his end of his career now. It's sad, but true. Unfortunately, he will be, he'll be a Leicester legend forever. He is... Mr. Jamie Vardy, he is Mr. Leicester City, the 5,000 to 1 Premier League title winner. No one quite like his story, to be fair, and I'm not surprised um, that there will be a movie eventually made on his story. You know, he's battled his way from early stages of his career, juggling, working full time hours uh, with his passion of football before signing up with Fleetwood Town, I believe, was his first big contract. Um, and then he had to blend those two together, you know, work and football. It was quite difficult. Court. And uh, that was at 24 years old, quite later on, really, in, in terms of where you start. And uh, he got 31 goals, I think, in 36 games that season, by the way. And that attracted its interest from um, yours truly, Leicester City. Uh, fast forward to now, you know, FA Cup winner and, like I just mentioned, Premier League winner as well, 5,000 to 1 odds. Uh, also in the 100 goals club in the Premier League. Now then, moving forwards, where do Leicester go? Because he is quite, he's quite literally the fox in the box, Jamie Vardy. You know, he, he, he probably doesn't do it now as much as he did, but he would hound the centre-backs. Hound, hound, hound the centre-backs for the possession of the ball. He'd try and nick it as best as he could. He's unplayable in that final third for Leicester City, especially around 2016-2018 time. Completely unplayable with the style that he played. Um, his variety as well, his blind sign runs, awareness to, you know, to create chances, everything, position in the box is just... It was just consistent, and that's I suppose that's why he got his England call up in the end. It's a shame we didn't see more of him for England. I'd have loved to have seen him even in the Euros coming up, but the fact remains his career is starting to decline. Now, the thing is with Leicester is we need to start focusing on where we're going to go next in terms of strikers. And I thought what we'd do on this video is just have a look at some of the other players that Leicester could either potentially be linked or looking at. Or just maybe just I'm, I'm dreaming here, but uh, we're going to cover a couple of, of, of strikers here. So first up is uh, obviously Edward. We're linked with Celtic, 23 year old, um, and Brendan Rodgers has already been under his wing. Uh, the Celtic and French under 21 international. He's earned many, many, many goals as well under under Brendan Rodgers as well as currently this season too. Um, it's no surprise that obviously he's gained uh, an attention, so to speak, in recent years. Not only has he proven to be a consistent and reliable uh, goal threat, but other aspects of his game are really, really well refined. Um, and again, he's only 23. So when you think what I've just said about Jamie Vardy being 24 and only just getting his proper first full contract for football, Edward is 23. He's a year younger than Vardy was at Vardy starting when he first got really, really started going. You know, Edouard's recent links to Leicester are practically interesting when you consider the type of forward he is compared to Vardy, however. Uh, both possess considerable play. Yeah, they do. They both, both uh, have pace. Considerably, they are both very fast. Their primary qualities are actually fairly dissimilar. Um, Brendan Rodgers is targeting a different profile as a separate option to his current strikers. Like Jamie Vardy's role this season, Ed Edward spends much of his time on the left half space, which is what Vardy did this season. When you look at Jamie Vardy, he, I think the reason why Kelechi Inacho got as many goals as he did is because Jamie Vardy changed his, his game. Um, instead of hounding down the defenders like he has, he's, he's picked his runs. No, he's not just constant, 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 constant. Because I don't think he's got the drive and energy in him for full 90 minutes doing what he used to do. So now he does provide that um, when necessary runs. And that can still pull defenders apart, which I think works for Nacho. Because Nacho is more of a, I'd say he's more of a slow paced technical player than, than Jamie Vardy. And I think... Nacho playing in a two is definitely helps benefits Nacho more than him playing as a lone striker, which I've 
okay, I, I have said that Nacho's rubbish at times, but that was before we seen him in a two. We've always based Nacho's performances on a one, and I don't think he's a lone striker, Nacho. So we're only going to learn how good Nacho can be later on with someone maybe like Edouard coming in as well. Um, you know, despite a slight drop off in form in the first half of this uh, past season, Edouard's league goal scoring numbers have been incredible. Co they have been consistent uh, since joining Celtic with uh, 15 goals in 2018 19, 21 goals in 2019 2020, 18 goals in 2020 21 campaign. Um, it's also the fact that he can create as well, uh, his ability that gives him the extra layer as a multi functional centre forward. His expected assist numbers are noteworthy. Have a look at this. Um, averaging of a 0 0.25 per 90 mins. So he's averaging um, just under what a quarter per 90 minutes of, of an, an assist, which is, is great for a, for a striker. Uh, his composure in front of line of goal is not limited to his shooting. Um, so I think this is going to be done, to be fair. You know, Frenchman, you've got other French uh, connections going on in the squad. And obviously, this guy has played under Rodgers before at Celtic. I'm pretty sure this is going to happen. But, but, if it doesn't happen, there's a lot there's a lot to discuss regarding Edouard, to be fair. We could talk forever. You know, his speed is more notable on the ball than it is off of it as well. He's less eager to use his pace to trouble defences in behind than Vardy. He's a player that prefers uh, ball to feet other than playing the ball in front of him to run onto. So he's a slight different to Vardy, you know. But for £15 million, I think the fee is a bargain. So I think Leicester really needs to just go for it quick before Arsenal or someone else similar to Arsenal pull him in. I think Leicester should get him quick and get him get him now because Brendan knows him anyway. Um, moving on to someone else, Tammy Abraham, who's also been linked to Leicester um, over the summer. And I think he's been linked with him during Christmas time as well, Tammy. I've seen the reports going back to December time last year. Um, he's also only 23, uh, part of the Chelsea squad. Um, but his time... At Chelsea, I think, is drawn to a close with the uh, out of favour forward being subject to a lot of speculation ahead of a busy summer transfer window. Um, the majority of the interested parties um, in the Premier League, Leicester City, seem to be the one linked. I think we have inquired about his services as well as a long term replacement for Jamie Vardy. I don't think I would prefer Edward, to be honest with you, but let's just look at the similarities between between Vardy and Tammy Abraham. Um, this might come as a shock. Uh, uh, Tammy Abraham standing six foot three and Vardy only being five foot ten. Vardy's the same height as me. That's mad. Uh, but there's a shared tenacity out of possession that creates chaos for opposition defenders when they press individually this season. These stats provided by uh, Top Spin Talk. Um, Tammy Abraham, 14.49, has a higher pressure per 90 than Jamie Vardy's 9.56, which is impressive given the latter's basically given metric. Although Brendan Rodgers, uh, I don't know if he will want to do the same thing with Tammy uh, and telling him to back off a little bit and save that that press because Bre Brendan Rodgers doesn't seem to like to press the uh, the defenders to be all honest with you that's what he's done with Vardy but maybe that's because of his age I don't know um but throughout this time at Chelsea uh, Tammy Abraham has been utilized as a lone striker now I've just talked about you know Inacho not being a lone striker I don't think we're going to play a lone striker system again I really don't see that um and I don't think Tammy, if Tammy Abraham came in as into the club, I don't think he plays a lone striker either. You've only got to look at, at this. Within Chelsea front three, uh, Tammy Abraham's role is simplistic. Hold a central position to occupy opposition defenders, but also connect play from the wings. Any chances that develop from the, win, from the width. So, again, it's not a lone striker role. He's, he's definitely a pairing of some sort. Either as a three up front, and um, with you know your right wing and your left wingers acting as almost side strikers next to him. So I don't think I don't think if he does come in Tammy Abraham that he'll be a lone striker. All in all, um, I've got to get a drink, guys. I'm struggling with this one today. Um, so when you look at it that way, I personally I don't think Ta Tammy Abraham is the one. I really don't. Um, another player that that's been linked to Leicester um, throughout probably. 
quite quite a while actually. I've seen his name pop up a fair bit. Um, I don't know too much about this guy, but he's from Salzburg. He's 22, and that's Patson Darker. Um, it, it's only I think it's his first season actually at Salzburg, uh, and Haaland averaged a goal every 61 point something minutes in the Austrian Bundesliga. Uh, the man that replaced him. Patson Darker has a goal every 72 minutes, so slightly off of what Haaland achieved uh, in the Austrian Bundesliga. So, I mean, he's scoring at a marginally, just a little bit lower rate than the uh, the Norwegian exception. Uh, outlining a, uh, a goal-scoring paraness between the two players, he would be a good fit for the club. Hence why the Foxes could make a move for him. 22-year-old uh, certainly has the pedigree to translate his performances in Austria to the top flight in England. Uh, I, again, I, I don't know too much about him. Um, unlike other players shortlisted, Dakar's application is primarily within a front two. Again, um, I think that goes with what Rodgers is looking for as a front two. And, and this is a player that, that sits in, in that plan. Um, and 22 years old, he's got youth, which again, Rogers likes youth players. Maybe we will see something up, but I can't see him going for someone like Danny Ings, for example. I, I just wouldn't see it like a 30 year old plus player. I don't see Rogers going for someone like that at all. Um, any of these so far, let me know in the comments, any of these so far sound like they are they, the long-term replacement for Jamie Vardy. Another name that I keep seeing is Adam Armstrong, which is for Blackburn Rovers. I think that's uh, that's really pushing, cutting straw, so to speak. That's, that is really pushing the uh, pushing the boat, so to speak, on, on, on terms of quality. But I'll read a little bit out of Adam Armstrong. Um, in regards to his play style, he probably comes closest to Vardy in uh, the list of of these players. Um, Armstrong is quick, very, very quick, actually. Uh, and that's obviously what Vardy is known for. Uh, active off the shoulder, uh, running at defenders and always looking to cause problems over the line. He's a nightmare for defensive setups, holding a high line. His pace often forces defences to retreat. Um, sounds very Jamie Vardy-esque of 2016. It opening up the space in middle sections of the field for teammates to exploit. With the injury to Harvey Barnes, don't forget, and the introduction of Kalichi Inacho, we saw Vardy operating on the left for large portions of this season. That Again, that's because, <laughs> yeah, Harvey Barnes has took that injury, which has outlined him, completely took him out of the Euros as well. Don't know if he'd have got in the squad anyway, because Gareth Southgate like, seems, seems to pick defenders. Um, but Jamie Vardy went that left side a little bit more, um, pulling pulling players out and giving Nacho space maybe to get those goals, which is what we see Nacho scoring goals. That would probably work for 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 this guy um, Armstrong from for Blackburn. Um, all you've got to do is, is is look at this. This is a space that Armstrong naturally gravitates towards in his role uh, of of pulling out players for his teammates to to you know pick up the pick up the pieces so to speak. Um, Linking up and interchanging with Harvey Barnes would form a dangerous duo with direct and high-paced tendencies that push opponents into the back foot. Armstrong's mixture of vertical threat and ability to uncover and exploit small pockets of space make him an effective option in a number of game scenarios, pushing for a goal in an open game or breaking down a team in a low defensive block. So, <laughs> I don't know no enough about Armstrong. To give you my thoughts on on this, this is just a little a separate article that I've read um, from uh, from top topbinstalk.com. Armstrong's t Armstrong's two footness is one of the biggest strengths of his game. He's ambidextrous, so he can play with two feet. Brilliant. So that, that's something that I think a lot of players would love to have. I'd love to be able to kick on my left foot, to be fair. As of late April, when he had eclipsed the 20 goal mark, nine of those were scored with his left, nine with his right and three with his head. Armstrong's wide-ranging finishing abilities is similar to Vardy, who has showcased that throughout his Premier League career. Saying that Armstrong has an eye for goal would be an understatement. He practically has a shot on sight philosophy. And while his efficiency could improve, he has clearly been given the green light by Tony Mowbray in his Blackburn setup. The Englishman is somewhat of an activity factory when it comes to making things happen in and around the box. So, <laughs> this guy sounds like Jamie Vardy of the Championship years at Leicester. That's, that's what this sounds like to me. Um, what are your thoughts, guys, on these these players? 
I, I'm, I'm liking the sound of, of Armstrong from Blackburn. Um, I didn't quite get his age. What was his age? 24. So it's the same age as Jamie Vardy at Fleetwood. Maybe this is a thing. Maybe we go for someone like this. Because Leicester do. Leicester, and time and time and time again, have gone for someone out of the box. And Golo Kante turned out to be a World Cup, now European um, UEFA Champions League winner as well. World Cup winner, Premier League winner. Um, Mares, Premier League winner, FA Cup winner. The list goes on. Um, and those two have been, just got pulled from nowhere. Jamie Vardy, same again. Non-league, million pound, bang. And look what he's achieved. I think, if anything, Leicester would probably end up going with Edward because Rodgers knows him well. But why wouldn't Leicester go for someone like this guy, Adam Armstrong for Blackburn Rovers? With the stats and stuff that I've just read, um, I'm going to have a look at him on YouTube now and see if I can see a bit more about his play. Uh, let me know in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on where we need to go, where we need to, to, to look at for Jamie Vardy's future replacement because it's only a matter of time before Mr. Chatshit get banged finally finally laces up them boots one last time and then off it goes into the sunset thank you for watching the video please smash a like on the video please hit the subscribe button if you can follow me at lee underscore chappy on all social media platforms and i shall so i shall sorry winksy i shall I fucked up that last bit. Please smash a like on the video. Please hit the subscribe button. And make sure you follow me on all social platforms at Lee underscore Chappy. I shall see you all during the Euros for England and also some of the Belgium games. We're covering a fair bit during the Euros. I shall see you soon.